so today we will do matrices okay so we will touch upon some of the important uh, you can say formulas okay we will not derive everything but the important uh, points that we need to cover in matrices okay So what is a matrix? Okay, first, what is a matrix? So it is a set of m n number, real or imaginary. A set of m n numbers, m into n. Okay, mm -hmm. m n numbers, either real or imaginary. So arranged in the form of rectangular array of m rows and n columns. So how they are arranged? They are arranged in the form of rectangular arrays. It's a set of m n numbers. Okay, so it has a m rows and n columns. Okay, so it will start with like this. Let us say this is a one one. Okay, then one the first prefix is row, second prefix is column. column. Okay, so if it has uh, m rows, so it will go like this a one one a two one, then it will go like this. So it's And so A M M one. That means this is this is M th row first column. First column. Okay. Then if you go as column one A one two, A one three. So the second prefix is column. Column. So it will go. It will go and it will become A one n. Okay. So A one n like this. It will become second row second column. That means A two two. Then this will become A two three. Column, and then go like this, and it will become a two n. Okay. So uh, like this, and here it will become a m two, the second row. Yeah. Okay. Then it will go like this, and it will end up with a m n. Okay. So this is your matrix, right? So. So uh, what we have told, it is a set of m n numbers. Okay, mm. it is a set of m n numbers. Why it is m n? Because m rows, n columns. So that means the number of the total, uh, how many numbers will be there in this uh, matrix? M will be into m into n. You can say that. Let let me say my number of rows are five. For example, if I have five rows, and let us say I have uh, four columns, so we'll have twenty numbers in the matrix. Mm. Yeah. So that's the definition of matrix, and the numbers occurring in the rectangular array. Uh, in this, uh, so these are all rectangular array. So the numbers. Uh, see, there are the numbers occurring in the rectangular array or the matrix are called elements of the matrix. So these numbers are called elements of the matrix. Elements of the matrix. Okay, we can bring matrix now, sir. matrix uh, what we will cover in this uh, today is will, this is the introduction then uh, types of matrices 
operations of matrices like say um, types like uh, what is a unit matrix what is a symmetric matrix what is a upper triangular matrix what is a lower triangular matrix uh, uh, all these what is a null matrix so those are different types of matrix we will cover then operations of matrix like addition subtraction multiplication those things will then transpose of matrix will cover and what is a symmetric matrix and uh, what is a skew symmetric matrix some elementary uh, operations matrix. yeah and then uh, inverse of matrix so these are the things we will cover okay quickly i'll take you through those okay so now we have defined what is a matrix So, what are the different uh, definitions? Rectangular matrix. Rectangular matrix. So, a matrix in which number of rows is not equal to number of column is called a rectangular matrix. So, let us say number of rows is equal to m, number of columns is equal to n. If m is not equal to n, then that is called a rectangular matrix. Okay. You know that what is a rectangle, what is the difference between a rectangle and a square? In a square, all Side sides are equal. equal. In a rectangle, so all sides are not equal, only opposite sides are equal. So the uh, length and the height, okay, they are not equal. So in this case, let us say the length is the column, height is the number of rows. So that's uh, so if m is not equal to n, if m is not equal to n, that is a rectangular matrix. That is one definition. Okay. Then row matrix. Okay. So row matrix. Row. Yeah, yeah. If uh, a matrix, so row matrix is the matrix with one row, one row. So it looks like this, something like this, okay. So it is, let us say, first row, A1, A11, A12, like this it will go, A, number of uh, columns, okay, A1, M, right, A1, N, M, N, N, sorry, A1, that means it has one row of n columns. So this is a row matrix. Then column matrix. Matrix. A matrix with one column. So the example A11, A uh, First row, then second row, A31, like this, like this it goes, and A, N1, right? So this is example of a column. Column, okay. so this looks like a column, okay. Column, and then there is something called square matrix. Square matrix. Okay. So if M is equal to N, this becomes a square matrix. Yeah. Yeah. We suppose the matrix I have, uh, let's say two, three, four, five. So here, uh, your uh, n is equal to number of column is equal to two, m is number of rows is equal to two. So m is equal to n. That means it's a square matrix. Yes. Yeah. Then there is something called null matrix. All yeah, matrix. Yeah. So, a matrix having all elements are zero is called a null matrix. Okay. So, all elements are zero. All elements are zero is called a null matrix. Okay. Then comes a 
स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स इज कॉल्ड सो फर्स्ट इट शुड बी ए स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स फर्स्ट सो ए स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स इज कॉल्ड ए डायगोनल मैट्रिक्स इफ ऑल इट्स नॉन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर जीरो डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर नॉन जीरो नॉन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर जीरो ओके सो डायगोनल मैट्रिक्स इज वन वेयर ऑल नॉन डायगोनल डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर जीरो राइट और नॉन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स आर जीरो ओके इट इज ए स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स सो इट इज ए स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स दैट हैज टू बी रिमेंबर ओके डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स so it is a square matrix where where all non diagonal elements are zero okay you take a picture of this so these are different types of matrix. so we have a rectangular matrix where m is not equal to n you have square matrix when m is equal to n you have row matrix where you have one row you have column matrix where you have one column you have null matrix where every element is zero you have diagonal matrix diagonal matrix is a square matrix where all other elements other than the diagonal is equal to zero okay so diagonal matrix means diagonal elements are non zero all other non diagonal elements are zero and that's a square matrix So six types of matrix we have defined. Okay. Then comes your scalar matrix. So a diagonal matrix in which all diagonal elements are equal. Okay. So uh, all non-diagonal ah. elements are zero and diagonal elements are same. Ah, so that is square matrix. डायगोनल मैट्रिक्स बट ऑल एलिमेंट्स इन द डायगोनल आर इक्वल सो दिस इज जीरो दिस इज फाइव Zero, zero. Then this is zero. This is zero. This is five. Zero, zero. So first, it has to be a diagonal matrix, and in the diagonal matrix, diagonal all elements elements are diagonal same. elements are same. So it's a diagonal matrix. It's a diagonal matrix with. All diagonal elements are same. Okay, so that's a scalar matrix. Then come identity matrix or unit matrix. Okay, so unit, whatever is unit, that is also called identity. डायगोनल Elements are equal to one. Elements equal to one. Clear. Yeah, this is important. Unit matrix is very very important. Okay. So this matrix, 
So first it will become a diagonal matrix. It has to be a square matrix, then it becomes a diagonal matrix, then it becomes a scalar matrix, then it becomes a unit matrix or on special cases. Yeah. Okay. So this if I write touch one zero 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 one zero zero one. Yes. This is unit or identity matrix. Okay, then upper triangular matrix and lower triangular matrix. So nine upper triangular. This is also square matrix. So the upper triangular matrix is square matrix and all the elements below the diagonal are zero. So upper triangular means lower elements are all zero. So all the elements, all the elements below, below the diagonal, all the elements. So it's a square matrix, it's a square matrix. on the top but all zeros are below. So this is called a upper triangular matrix. Similarly a lower triangular matrix this is also a upper square matrix. Yeah. So lower triangular matrix. So if all elements above the diagonal are zero. So the same example, you, if you convert it like this, so if you write it as, let us say I write it as 1, 4, write 1, 2, 3, okay, so this and uh, This is the case, this is a lower triangular matrix. So just remember lower triangular means lower elements are non-zero, it's a square matrix. So we have discussed about 10 different types of matrix. Why we are doing this? Because we need these things uh, down the line, okay. So we take a picture of this. Okay, now operations, uh, okay. Uh, so, when you say that two matrix are equal, when all the corresponding elements are equal, then you say, 
तो टू मैट्रिक्स आर इक्वल ओके सो ऑल कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग एलिमेंट्स आर इक्वल मैट्स इट विल बी इक्वल मैट्रिक्स ओके देन ऑपरेशन ऑन मैट्रिक्स ओके ऑपरेशन ऑन मैट्रिक्स ओके व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन एडिशन ऑफ मैट्रिक्स फर्स्ट एडिशन ऑफ मैट्रिक्स ओके सो फॉर एडिशन ऑफ मैट्रिक्स द ऑर्डर ऑफ बोथ थ्री मैट्रिक्स शुड बी सेम ओके दैट इज वन कंडीशन Are the same order. Okay, if two matrices are of same order, if two matrices are of same order, same order. Okay, m into n. Okay. By adding each element of B to the corresponding of element of A, so you get the addition. By adding each element, I have told what is element. Every so by adding each element with the corresponding element, each element of A is added with corresponding element of B. Let us say I have a matrix A with m into n. That is the size of the matrix. Then B also has to be m into n. So order has to be same. Okay. So these things you add it. By adding each element with the corresponding element. So, let us say a one one, a two one, like this. So a m one. So it goes like this. It becomes a m n. So this, uh, let us say this is of matrix A. Okay. Similarly, uh, you have another matrix. So this is. Matrix A. Similarly, you have another matrix. Um, let us say, um, let me give it a suffix A, right? Mm -hmm. So here it will be A one uh, one B letter. Okay. So like this, it will go on. So A M one B letter. Then it will goes on A into M N B letter. Like this. So I if I add it. I I have to write it as a one one a plus a one one b, right? Corresponding yeah. element. Yeah. So then here a m n m n a plus a m n b. Okay. So this is how you get the addition. This is addition of matrix. Then the subtraction of the matrix is the same. So subtraction, you just subtract the corresponding element. Subtraction of matrix. So the order of two matrices is to same. We are doing the subtraction. Ah, so it will become a one one a minus a one one b, and then a m n a minus a m n. So this is addition and subtraction. Okay. Uh, then something called scalar multiplication of matrix. Scalar. Scalar multiplication of matrix. Scalar multiplication. So. Multiplication of matrix A by a scalar k is obtained by multiplying every element of A by k. Okay, so let me say, I am my scalar is k. Let us say I have a scalar any number. Yeah. Say it can be one, two, three, five, four, whatever. So it will be k. Then a one one, a one two like this it will go on. So it will be a one n. Okay, then 
am1 and then it will go on amn when i multiply what it will be like k into a a11 k into a11 k into a12 k into a12 k into a13 like this it will go on then k into a ah uh, k into a 1 n okay so this is uh, one uh, number of any number of columns then you go down k into m a m1 then k into a m n okay so that's the result okay so you multiply each and every element of the matrix the by the scalar so that gives uh, scalar multiplication you should take a picture so we have studied about uh, addition of matrix subtraction of matrix and scalar multiplication of matrix and we have defined different types of matrix row matrix column matrix square matrix null matrix or zero matrix so a matrix where every element is zero is called null matrix we have uh, defined what is a diagonal matrix so diagonal matrix uh, diagonal matrix so diagonal matrix so diagonal matrix is also a square matrix then uh, scalar matrix is also a square matrix in which all elements are equal so just remember uh, so a diagonal matrix in which all diagonals are e elements are equal so diagonal matrix you know is a matrix where uh, only diagonal elements are non zero all other elements are zero okay so diagonal matrix is also a square matrix okay so all non diagonal elements are zero that is a diagonal matrix you know yeah. all uh, non diagonal elements are zero then only it will be diagonal matrix that that means you are telling diagonal only diagonal is the one which has um, uh, numbers all other side is that side is diagonal so this diagonal matrix uh, scalar matrix uh, so diagonal matrix gets converted into a scalar matrix if all the diagonal elements are same yeah. so uh, this is scalar matrix is subset of diagonal matrix and the all these diagonal matrix are, these are all subset of square matrix okay. so then scalar matrix then identity matrix so again again that is a subset of scalar matrix all okay. diagonal okay. elements are one then upper triangular uh, then unit matrix uh, then upper triangular lower triangular okay so then we have done scalar multiplication addition subtraction now multiplication of matrix this is very important multiplication is bit tricky okay multiplication of matrix okay okay so let us say i have a matrix a i have a matrix b okay so this matrix a is what is it written here in small letter what is this a i j okay a i j so a i j okay let it let it be m into n okay b should be uh -huh. m into mm -hmm. so b i j it, it is n into p let us say okay no, if this is the case then the matrix multiplication that the resulting matrix will be of dimension this ab will be of dimension am into p this is your resulting dimension and in order to be able to do the matrix number multiplication of, number a, a, the number of uh, columns of past matrix 
is equal to number of rows of second matrix. So condition number of number of uh, rows rows of second matrix matrix should be be equal to number of columns columns of first matrix that is the that is very very important in order to be able to multiply two matrix that should be there and how do you get it who is so let us say uh, i am getting uh, this this a ab matrix a into b matrix let us say so let me say i uh, this is a b matrix so let me say uh, the, the any element of this product matrix if it is i k a i k so what does this a i k means this means you get this a i k by multiplying the ith row of matrix a with kth column of matrix b so the elements the elements of product matrix elements of product matrix matrix are obtained by by multiplying line i row of a with kth row of b kth column not kth, kth row column of b but there you've written b as i k it will be k something else no i am just telling the meaning of this a i k means you are multiplying uh, ith row of a in, into kth column of b that is the this is first matrix i will come from the first matrix k from the second matrix i k means i th row will be multiplied with k th column of b okay so if i give a example okay let us say i write 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so let us say this is 3 into 2 this is 3 into 2 okay so my number of columns should be equal to number of rows here 3 ha huh. let us say uh, the, it is three columns means it should have three rows but it can have two columns also so let us say i have i need to have three rows okay so 10 20 30 so three 10 20 30 40 50 60 so i can multiply it 3 into 2 hmm. so this is 3 into 2 so your resulting matrix will be 3 into 2 okay so how do i get this multiplication so let us say uh, my a first element will be a11 that means one it will be first row of uh, a will be multiplied with first column of b so how do i get the first element it will be 1 into 10 okay first into first then second uh, first row into second column uh, first row into first column right this is first row this is first column so when i am multiplying 1 into 10 plus 2 into 30 plus 3 into 50 3 into 50 okay so this is my first element 
Okay, so this is my first element. So how do I get the second element? How do I get the second element? So okay, I have to multiply the second row. Uh, so uh, suppose let me say this is a one one. Okay, I want to find my a, a uh, first a row a two one. one. So if so I want to second row and to first column. Okay, second row and first column. Uh, uh, second row and first column. So four into ten plus five into thirty. Uh, so six into fifty. Six into fifty. So uh, like this, uh, mm -hmm. so it will have. We have decided that it will be three rows into two columns. So next, I will get this one by multiplying these three with this. Okay. So likewise, you will get the result. Okay. If you do practice more and more, you will get yeah. to know. Okay. Now you know what is multiplication. You can do it. Yeah. Okay. You can take a snapshot. So there, there are uh, now we have covered different types of matrix. We have covered operations of matrix, addition, subtraction, done. Yeah. Addition, subtraction, uh, scalar multiplication, very very important. All elements of the matrix have to be multiplied by a number. The scalar. Scalar. Okay. Then uh, this one, this multiplication, one very important condition. Uh, Number of columns of first matrix has to be equal to number of rows of second matrix. Otherwise, you cannot multiply, right? Yeah. And uh, the, there can be objective type questions on this. Okay, A M N into A B N P. Okay, is resulting is A M P. Sorry, A B N P. A B so, into B. You can multiply only A B uh, into B. So the conditions A. Let us say. M into N, okay. B, B N into P. So the condition for multiplication is like these two are equal. Number of columns of first is equal to number of rows of second, and the resulting matrix will have dimension M A P. M into P. So these are important things. Okay. And to get any element in the resulting matrix, say A into B. So any element, let us say a one one you want to find. So you are multiplying first row of the first matrix with first column of the first matrix. Yeah. So when you are multiplying, so that's why you need to have equal number of columns and uh, number of columns in first has to be number of columns uh, rows in second. See, suppose uh, my I have columns this right. I have rows like this. I have to multiply to get the first uh, first column and first row. I have to multiply uh, uh, to get the first row, first column of this resulting matrix. Yes. Let us say this is first row, first column. So in this case, the columns here should be equal to the rows here, right? Yeah. If this is four, this has to be four to make it uh, possible for the multiply for the multiplication. But if by chance if this is three and this is four, you cannot multiply. Multiplication is not possible. Okay, so that's the uh, crux of uh, this. Okay, then properties of matrix addition and multiplication. Properties of matrix addition and multiplication. One is called uh, left side, one is uh, right side. Okay. So one is distributive law. Okay. Distributive law. Distributive law. What is this distributive law? So A into B plus C. Is equal to A B plus A C. That is matrix multiplication obeys that law. Okay. Similarly, A plus B into C is equal to A C plus B C. 
Let's see. Let's see. That is your distributive law. And then there is something called uh, associative law. Okay. So, associative law. Associative law. Okay. So, Okay, so, so this is very simple, A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C, so this is associated, okay. and then uh, this is multiplication, uh, this is addition, in multiplication also A B into C is equal to A into B, okay. this is associative law. And then cumulative law. Okay, so this is cumulative law. In cumulative, one has to be very careful. So addition is cumulative, but multiplication is not. Okay. Okay, so addition is cumulative, like a plus b is equal to b plus a. Multiplication of huh. like this. So AB is not, not equal, equal to B. That is so there can be a MCQ, okay, uh, whether matrix multiplication is cumulative or not. So matrix mod matrix addition is cumulative, but matrix multiplication is not cumulative. Okay, so this is cumulative law. Okay. And then existence of identity in uh, addition or multiplication. So, uh, existence of identity, okay. So, let us say existence of identity. Okay. Existence of identity. That means if you add a null matrix, okay. If you add a null matrix, so 0 plus a is equal to a plus b. Okay. And in multiplication, if you multiply an identity matrix, not a null matrix, so a, i, this is identity, identity matrix, okay. yeah. i into a. So identity matrix is also otherwise called a unit matrix. So this I is identity or unit, or unit matrix. Same. Okay. Don't confuse with the uh, name. Identity or unit matrix. So unit matrix is a square matrix where all its diagonal elements are uh, 1 and all non-diagonal elements are 0. So if you are multiplying a matrix with the identity matrix, it will be it will be cumulative in nature. When it is identity matrix, it will be cumulative. Yes, but if it is, we use this in inverse. Hmm. Yeah. So this this is one important uh, concept. Okay. So existence of identity. Okay. Then existence of additive inverse. Okay. So is four, then five. Existence of additive inverse. Okay. So so a plus minus a is equal to minus a plus a okay is equal to zero. This is existence of identity inverse. So if you um, minus a means what? You are just multiplying minus one in every element of that matrix. 
and if you add those things, you will get a normal matrix. And there are some other algebraic laws, like say, there are some other laws. Okay. So let us say a scalar k into a plus b is equal to k a plus k b. That is another law. Okay. So there. So, uh, then, um, suppose you have one scalar, then you have another scalar into a matrix, let us say, some other scalar, uh, this is equal to k into c a, this is equal to AC into A. So this this is another law. Okay. These are all and these are and if you are multiplying a null matrix with any matrix. So null matrix into any matrix is null matrix. Okay. So this is one law, this is another law, this is another law. So these are some der derivatives of other laws, okay. These are simpler laws, okay. So yeah, so the, now we have covered different types of, law, of laws, you can take a picture. And so, distributive law, associative law, cumulative law, and matrix multiplication is not cumulative, and then existence of identity. So, when you multiply a identity matrix or unit matrix with a matrix, uh, AI, it, it will behave, it will be cumulative, it will be uh, follow, it will obey the cumulative law. Okay. Okay, so we are left with some more laws. Okay, now transpose of matrix. Okay, what is transpose? Transpose of matrix. See, I am assuming that you have studied all these things. I am just doing a recap. Okay, otherwise, these things it, it is not a matter of one hour. It needs so many hours of practice to be able to solve numericals. These are just I am taking you through the formula. I am not deriving anything. But these are simple things. You don't need to remember derivations also for MCQ questions. Okay. This is just a recap. Okay. So transpose of a matrix A of order MN is obtained by interchanging rows and columns of A. It is denoted by A transpose. Okay. So if you interchange row with column, that is called transpose. Interchange row with column columns. So example, let us say A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So this is A. Then what will be the A transpose? Okay. One. So my aij so let us say this element is your ij aij so you make this aij you replace it by aji that's all so let us say this is my a11 a12 a13 a14 a15 and a16 Okay, so A11 uh, here A transpose A11 1 remains 1, yes, so sir. that will be A11. Okay, then A12 will become A21, right? A13 will become A31. Okay, A21 will become A12. A22 will remain the same. A23 will become A32. 
a three one will become a one three, a three two will become a uh, a two three. Sorry, uh, sorry, this is a three two. two. Uh, a three two. No. No. Three two. Okay, three one become one three. No, two three, three two sorry, will become two, two three. three. Okay, two three, and then three, this will remain the same. So if this is the case, what will be the answer? So a one one will be one now. Then a two one is four, right? Then a three one is seven. One four seven. So whatever is this will become one four seven. Then a uh, a two one will become a one two. Okay. So a one two is two, right? A one two is two. Yeah. Then a two two is five, right? Yes. Same. Then a two three will become a three two, which is eight, right? Yeah. Eight. So one four seven, then two five eight, then this will become three six nine, right? Yeah. So this is my transpose. Yes. So just we we interchange a i j with a j i. then what are the different properties of transpose there are various properties of transpose properties of transpose okay so a transpose transpose will be a same that is one property then a plus b these are very very important things there can be numerical only yeah. so a plus b transpose is equal to a plus a transpose plus b transpose so a plus b a plus b whole bracket transpose is equal to a transpose plus b transpose okay and then and this cumulative law holds good in transpose so a a b transpose is equal to b transpose a transpose very very important yeah. this you should remember yes sir and then similarly a b c transpose is equal to c transpose b transpose a transpose important not that simple you have to remember there can be derivation to prove this we are not okay. going to that so and again another one is k a a a whole transpose is equal to k a a k into k transpose this yeah. is also k is k hmm k is k so uh, these are some of the important properties of transpose Some of the important properties of transpose you should remember. We you cannot spend much time in deriving those things. Okay. Then, then another thing is another thing is called what is orthogonal matrix. That is also very important concept. Orthogonal matrix. We have studied different types of matrix, but we have not studied what is orthogonal matrix. Okay, so. A square matrix. So first, orthogonal matrix is a square matrix. A is said to be orthogonal if A into A transpose is equal to A transpose into A is is equal to identity matrix. matrix. So a square matrix. So A into A transpose is equal to A transpose into A, and which results in identity matrix or unit matrix is called. So in that case. this matrix will be called as orthogonal matrix then then a is, a is orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix if this condition is satisfied then matrix a is called orthogonal matrix very very important uh, point this is yeah. okay now uh, yeah you can take a picture of this Then we will discuss about what is uh, symmetric matrix and all.
so symmetric and skew symmetric matrix so we have done with the transpose we will discuss what is symmetric and skew symmetric matrix symmetric and skew symmetric matrix okay so First, it should be a square matrix. So, a square matrix is called a symmetric matrix. Okay, if a i j is equal to a j i. Okay, so a square matrix matrix is called a symmetric matrix matrix if if a i j is equal to a j i that is the definition of a symmetric matrix so you then what is a skew symmetric matrix if so this is a symmetric matrix okay this is symmetric then skew symmetric skew symmetric this is if a a j i is minus of a i j yeah. if this is the condition then this is skew matrix skew symmetric matrix okay then inverse of a matrix this is a very very important concept that you need determinant hmm you need determinant you might have done internal we will cover determinant also so let me give a uh, introduction that like what are joint and all of that ha huh. so what is uh, inverse of a matrix so we have discussed what is symmetric non symmetric all these square matrix you identity matrix all these you need to know to find out the inverse of a matrix so inverse of a matrix okay so let a and b are two square matrices so let a and b are two square matrices square matrix a and b are two square matrices and if ab in ab if ab is equal to ba ej identity matrix or unit matrix if this is the case then if this is the case then b is the inverse of a yeah. if this condition is met that implies b is equal to a inverse if this happens then you will get multiplication will give rise to a inverse. identity or unit matrix okay. so so uh, another thing inverse of a square matrix if it exist is unique okay so so in not that every uh, matrix will have inverse existing it has a condition okay so okay so uh, i when after doing determinant we will do it uh, so for example this inverse concept is used to solve some linear, uh, linear equation linear okay ha huh. uh, linear uh, system of equation so let us say i have a11 okay a12 and a13 a21 a22 a23 a31 a32 A three okay, then let me say my I have three unknowns. Let us say okay, so let me say my unknowns are x one. Uh, let me say let me say this is this, x, y, and j. Okay, so when I multiply two matrix, it will 
give rise to another square matrix okay let us say this is my matrix a and let us say i'll have some resulting matrix b right so here it is 3 into 3 here this is 3 uh, into 1 uh, 3 into 1 okay so number of column is number of so it will give rise to a matrix again 3 into 1 okay so if so this is a uh, this is a uh, set of linear equations you are trying to solve these unknown x y and z okay so here this a 1 2 this can be written as a okay this is this is a square matrix and x y z uh, you can write it as let us say uh, okay instead of writing it as x y z we can write it as x1 x2 x3 so these three are my unknown x1 x2 x3 then a into column matrix x is equal to b right so i my unknowns are x1 x2 x3 so this my x column matrix x1 x2 x3 will be uh, a inverse b in determinants ha so x is equal to a inverse b so you need to find out what is this inverse okay adjoint of a by determinant mm -hmm. so this a inverse is equal to rj adjoint of a by divided by determinant of a okay so uh, determinant we will discuss anyway like say determinant is very simple in thing like say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so what is this determinant so it will be 1 into 5 into 9 minus 6 into 8 okay so this is first term second term we will have a minus sign yeah. we will discuss how it will be a minus sign so minus 2 into 4 into 9 minus 7 into 6 right yeah. then 3 that is a plus 4 into 8 minus 5 into 7 so this is my determinant okay so this is the determinant of the matrix okay it, uh, this is how you find the determinant then uh, for finding uh, finding uh, inverse first you should find a determinant also then you should find adjoint of a rj that is called rj by determinant of a so this rj uh, we will have a more detailed discussion what is adjoint of a you might have already solved yeah. this okay so why is it necessary to find out inverse of a matrix you have to find so minor to solve a, to solve a, so you to solve a linear uh, system a system of linear equation to find out all those unknowns okay so this is uh, here this is in structural analysis so i was uh, teaching you mechanics of material uh, that one young small lesson so we something we use finite element methods in to find out the displacement of when you are applying load on a structure at each and every location you want to find out how much the um, the the any point in the structure has displaced so those displacement is called that is in structure it is called nodes so those nodal displacement we found out those are the unknowns x1 x2 x3 okay, okay. Uh, and then uh, this is called this will be the called the stiffness of the structure so stiffness into displacement is equal to force so uh, so uh, the stiffness is a property of the system so that is known force whatever you are applying you know so to find out the displacement at each and every node of the structure we use this so this matrix principle is hugely hugely used in uh, finite element method which is used to find out the stress so uh, you are let us say you have a structure like this okay so i am applying some force i am applying some force on this so on this force it is a vector it will it will be in a different direction x y and z direction so if you take the component it will have three direction of force and this structure we divide it into uh, infinite uh, finite number of points okay yeah. so these at these each and every location If this will have we call it as the displacement okay so let us say my displacement uh, 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 my displacements okay so i will have a matrix okay i will have a big matrix called a okay that is called the stiffness 
like the uh, spring stiffness this property of the stiffness and uh, this and displacement of each and every node that is called the nodal uh, displacement so this is a uh, square matrix this is a column matrix and this will give rise to another column matrix which is nothing but your holes okay so in the spring uh, we have studied okay in spring you have studied i am applying a force f okay i am applying a force f my stiffness is k right yeah. and if this uh, this is getting this my this is getting displaced uh, displaced by some displacement let us say x x okay so uh, my f is equal to k into x okay so if i find my x i know by how much it is getting displaced yes, yes. so if i know my displacement the strain strain is equal to change in length by original length so let us say the strain here it got displaced by let us say uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let us say the displacement is x okay. and let us say the original length of the spring is l okay so strain is equal to change in length like del this l by uh, l. or you can write it as del l by l or here you can call it here for the uh, for to have a better inter, uh, relationship i am putting the del l as x yeah. because i am putting things as x here so del l by l is my strain okay then if i know strain stress is equal to young's modulus into uh, strain okay so this is my stress is equal to young's modulus into strain so um, so in first in any structure i am applying a force f okay i will giving you some example of a rod okay so i am applying some force f this by applying some force f it got elongated okay so this much of elongation is let us say x okay so that is the displacement so i am my length of this rod is l okay then my strain is equal to change in length which is x divided by original length so this x so this is a rod it is a simple system so a complex structure it will not be equivalent to rod it will have n number of degrees of freedom like okay. okay so this x are the nodal displacement and these are the property of the system which is the stiffness and you are applying a force f knowing force you are applying force you have some stiffness what is the displacement so if i know the displacement i can find the strain then i can find the stress yes. so why do i need to find the stress because i can i know the allowable so i know my tensile strength ha my utx ultimate tensile strength is this much by doing a testing you have developed the properties of those material ultimate tensile strength so if i know my ultimate tensile strength and if i know my stress my stress should not exceed ultimate tensile strength so by doing this calculation i know strain and i will i get stress if i get my stress let's say it is i go get it some 550 mp if this is more than the uts of aluminum let us say this is 500 mp if this is the case then it is going to fail understood uh, that's why in structural anal analysis uh, in mechanical engineering they use this or in civil engineering or whichever the designing of any structure they use this inverse of matrix principle uh, frequently okay so uh, you can draw like this. we may think where is being mathematics applied so in practical applications so mathematics use applied frequently okay that's why you should understand mathematics which is being used for finding out different uh, solving different uh, uh, problems in physics or uh, engineering or whatever Okay. So that's all about inverse of matrix. Then we'll have one more session on determinants, for where we'll um, we can correlate easily, so that we know we can know what is. I have given you what is inverse of a matrix, but argent it need uh, that cofactor and other minor. those things, uh, minor and cofactor. Those need to, we need to know determinant there, so that it will be easy. So then we can do it. Okay. So that's all about matrix. You can practice as all these definitions has to be remembered without spending much time. You can do MCQ. Okay. Yeah. Okay.